oh my god how did i keep my hair up like that for a whole day <sighs> much better so one of the big things that i bang about bang about <laughs> in this channel on this channel do, 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 do. hello i'm charlotte and this is books and bargains So let's set the scene here. The year is 2003. I am 12 years old and getting settled into my second year of secondary school. Two things you're going to have to use your imagination for here. My eyebrows are currently plucked so, so thinly that they almost don't exist. My makeup is by Sabrina Secrets magazine. And this is a really sticky pink lip gloss. My hair is straightened to within an inch of its life because curly hair was a no-go. Your hair was poker straight, probably with some of those chunky blonde highlights through it. The music playing in the background is a mixture of Evanescence Bring Me To Life when I'm feeling emo. Tattoos, all the things she said. Beyonce's Crazy In Love or busted, you said no. I'm probably reading either Jacqueline Wilson's newest release, Lola Rose, or The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. And if it's a Wednesday, tonight on TV, I will be watching Bad Girls and then ringing Leanne for a debrief straight after. I've also gone veggie and the food is terrible. There are about three different Linda McCartney meals you can buy. And I think corn do the chicken pieces and some really dry sausages. And that's about it. So now I've set the scene, let's go to school. So today I'm doing the school days tag, which is from Victoria, what Victoria read. She tagged me in this ages ago and I'm only just getting around to filming. So I apologise for that. The tag has lots of different prompts and you can do them all or you can choose from them and what I've done is I've set up a timetable of how it worked for me at school. So let's go. The first prompt is First Bell. Tell us about the book that first got you into reading and I've said before that there are a lot of books from my childhood that just all seem to melt into one but I was talking to someone the other day about the like books my mum read to me as a child and some of my favourites there were Go to Sleep Little Bear and Cuddly Dudley and You're a Hero Daily Bee and Bad Mood Bear and so reading was always something that was part of my life from a really young age. So I'm going with the English prompt now so I'm going to pretend that I have double English as there were two questions in English and the first of this is one book that you studied at school and I think this was probably in this year so I'm going to go with To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird is the first book that I read that really sticks out to me as something that I learnt from. Um, it's the first one that really made me question things and question the morals of things and really left me quite outraged at the end of it. I think that was the start of me being an activist was when I read To Kill a Mockingbird and I remember just feeling like this is so unfair, the injustice of all of this. And on the same note as that, I do remember again, maybe the same year, possibly a later year, in history we watched the pianist and i was a very sensitive child and teenager and i am now a very sensitive adult but i remember having to leave the classroom and cry and then getting teased for ages about that but that again really got to me so we move on to our second lesson of english now and that is one book you would add to the curriculum and why I have three answers for this and I'm not going to apologise for that. So one of the things that I bang on about on this channel is that I think we need more representation and actually if we're talking secondary school curriculum I kind of think that it needs to get started a lot sooner than that. First of all if I have these books in my book room I will show them you otherwise I'll just insert a picture here. Some of them I do have but they're in my other room and 
not using spoons to go and get them so this is just a really small selection of things that I think could be added so first of all I want to talk about what I would add into primary schools and one of those is Me, My Dad and the End of the Rainbow by Benjamin Dean if you haven't already read this book it is beautiful I read it via NetGalley and immediately ordered my own copy if I'd have read this in primary school and I really hate the argument from parents so if this is your opinion please don't at me because I'm just not open to discuss this but I hate the thought of like oh if kids read about gays that's going to make them gay well no because i read about world war ii and i don't want to go off and be a fighter pilot i also read tracy beaker and that didn't make me bunk off school so that's just not an argument we're going to have but anyway this book is so inclusive and this is about our main character archie and archie finds out that his dad is gay and he doesn't really know how to deal with that he's not prejudiced towards his dad's decision he just doesn't know what it will mean for him and his life and i think we need to read more stories like that we also need to get into middle grade books different races different disabilities and all these kind of things i'm hoping to make more videos on these as i read them when it comes to secondary school books firstly i think that we need more fat rep in ya when i was a teenager i read girls under pressure by jacqueline wilson when i was going through similar issues as the main character in that the book really talks about bulimia and the pressure to lose weight however i am going to reread it again soon but i don't think it really tackles the issues in any meaningful way I remember reading it at the time and really relating to Ellie but it didn't stop me dieting and it didn't stop me always feeling like I was the fat one. It hurts me that I spent so much of my teenage life worrying about my weight. I hated PE and that was because I didn't want to show my body and I think we really need to teach girls, I've said before, how good exercise feels and moving your body feels rather than just making everybody do cross country anyway that is a rant for another time so i would firstly like to get more plus size representation books such as big bones or bethany rutter's books and i'm going to be doing a video this month about five fat rep fictions that i've loved I also think that again we need to be talking about disability, race and one of the books that has both of these along with sexuality is Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. If I'd have read a book like this as a teenager I think it would have helped me be less judgmental. I think that every book that I was reading was from white authors and it mirrored my experience but never really took me outside of that and on the theme of that I think that everybody should be taught why i'm no longer talking to white people about race because i think that was just such an important book and i think if i'd have read that maybe later teenage years kind of year 10 11 that would have been a really good book to unpick and have discussions on so they're the books i'm going to go for for that question so break time which book have you most recently dnf'd or taken a break from well i talked about my dnf's in my last video so if you haven't seen that i'll link it above so i thought for this one i'd go for one that is a kind of dnf for now and i think this may be controversial however let me explain that is kylie reads such a fun age and i put this down because i know that i'm gonna really enjoy this book but at the time i started reading it I just needed something really fluffy and I wasn't in the headspace to read something that I'd have to think about and so I put that down and I am hoping to pick that up again pretty soon. Question four is PE, what are the biggest books on your TBR? So the biggest I think is Lace which I can't find anywhere which you'd think being such a chunky book it would stand out to me but it doesn't so i've picked up two one that i'm currently reading which is grown ups by marion keys and this is a chunk this is over 600 pages and look how small the writing is i've picked that up for the irish readathon and yeah i'm a bit put off by big books and i don't know why do big books put you off and have you got any tips to kind of get over that 
because the other one again over 600 pages is Jodie Pickle's House Rules and I picked this up in a charity shop because it just sounded so good it says when Emma Hunt's son is diagnosed with Asperger's she knows she will do anything to help him she accepts, expects other people not to understand she expects the stares and whispers she even expects trouble with the police but she doesn't expect Jacob to be charged with murder and that just intrigued me straight away but again that is a chunk question five is drama what is the best ending and again as i'm sure you're accustomed to by now i have more than one answer for this the first book that immediately came to my mind was claire mackintosh's let me lie now i know that claire mackintosh is a bit of a divisive author on booktube but i have read everything that she has written so far and I have loved everything that she has written so far so that's where I stand on the Claire McIntosh debate. I know my friend Leanne from Literary Diversions does not like Claire McIntosh and it hurts my heart to think that I have a friend that is like that. However this book had me twisting and turning and every time I figured thought I'd got it figured out I was completely wrong and then the very last line of this book got me like I, I just couldn't oh so if you haven't already read that and you like a thriller I definitely picked that one up the other one is the Paris Library which I know I have banged on about recently but I think it just took me by surprise that I loved a historical fiction so much and I don't think it's the very, very ending, but there's something that happens in this right near the end. And if you'll, you've read it, you'll know what I'm talking about. That just made me go, whoa, oh my God, I was not expecting that. So yeah, that had to be in there. We're on to question six and we're now going for lunch. For the record, if I was at school right now, my lunch would either be a bag of chips which I think, okay, so this is another thing that used to bug me at school. A bag of chips was 35p for half a bag, 70p for a full bag, and the half a bag was always more than enough. It was really cheap. Whereas the sandwiches and things were always more expensive, and I was obsessed with losing weight, so that used to really bug me. But then, I remember, I'm sure we were in year 10, they got pasta king, so I used to have a veggie pasta every day for my lunch anyway that's not what this tag is about the question for this one is favorite book that features food and i'm going to be really predictable here and go for hungry hearts because hungry hearts is a short story collection that encompasses all these different food places on hungry hearts row and everybody's stories from the different places and I loved it. That was gifted to me by Victoria, so definitely a good book. Question seven is how do you rate your books? And I used to just give five stars to everything, but this year I'm trying that when I do my wrap up, I really think about, okay, which books are a five star? And a five star to me has got to be like a new favorite that I think will be my favorite forevermore. Obviously I don't know if it will be, I could change my mind at any point in the future but when I'm rating it that's what I try and have in my mind then most of the other books I read either fit into a three or four star category so four star is really enjoyed but not quite enough to give it that five star three can be a bit weird for me so I've read dual narrative books where one of the stories I really didn't like and one I really loved so they settle on a three star but also I find a lot of the kind of, I read a lot of what you would call chiclet and a lot of them I enjoy but there are diet culture references or there is just something about them. Three star for me is a good rating, like three star I enjoyed but it's nothing to write home about. So I've said things before, so if somebody came up to me and said can you recommend a book with really good plus size rep if something was a three star i wouldn't necessarily lead with that i would go with my four and five star books however if somebody came up to me and said 
have you read this book what did you think about it if it was a three star I would say yeah yeah it was quite good so it's not that that's how I rate them two star and one star one star is very very rare for me to give most books that I don't like get a two star because if I'm not enjoying them if I DNF them I don't tend to give them a star rating unless I've read more than about 75% of them before I DNF but one star is like really problematic like it doesn't matter if I like the story if it was a really really problematic read one star straight away question eight and now we're moving on to modern foreign languages fun fact I did German at school and I can still speak basic German now enough that when we went to Germany for the Christmas markets I managed to order plenty of food and drink for us but this is talk about some translated fiction that you have liked now the first one of these is Vita Martin's Here the Whole Time and I believe this was translated from Portuguese and I love this this is a body positive queer love story about our main character Felipe who is looking forward to his I think it's spring break not doing anything and then finds out that he's going to have to share that with his hot neighbour and the other one that I really liked and this again is a bit of a Marmite book on booktube is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata I hope I've said that right and when people say nothing much happens in this book and that's why they give it a low star they're right nothing much happens in this book but that's why I like it it's to me it made me think about being happy with what you've got and not giving in to the pressures of society to always be doing more I think especially as women there is that expectation that you have to do it all whereas this book kind of challenges that narrative and talks about the kind of happiness in just being happy with your lot so I really enjoyed that one we are on to the last two questions now question nine is final bell what is the last book that you finished and last night i finished poppy alexander's the little library and i really enjoyed that it was just what i needed comforting fluffy small village life and you'll hear more about that in my march wrap up and so the last question is homework now i always had the best intentions to do my homework as soon as I got home from school and then I just couldn't be bothered so a lot of my homework was done either in the morning before school or at the very last minute however I think I did also used to go to the library at school on a lunchtime and do my homework but uh, that's another story and homework is the last non-fiction you read and enjoyed however I decided to change this slightly because I have only just uploaded my February wrap up so I didn't want to repeat that but two that I want to talk about that I don't think I've given enough airtime in this channel are Help Me by Marion Power which I read this last January as part of a book tour and loved it and I now also own the audiobook and when I'm struggling with my anxiety I put it on because I just find it so soothing to listen to. It Marion Power is an English journalist and she took a year trying out different self-help books and through it she talks about how that changed her and things that she did and things that it's just a wonderful book just I just loved it and the other one which is also another comfort listen for me is The Unexpected Joy of the Ordinary and again this is a book all about being happy with what you've got and it goes into theories about like the hedonic treadmill which is that there's always something else to be reaching for so if you if your goal is to buy a flat you buy that flat and then your goal becomes to fill it with beautiful furniture and then once you've done that you want a bigger flat or a bigger house with a better view and it is just about how we're all kind of on that treadmill when we really need to be looking at gratitude and the joy of well the joy of the ordinary so yeah I am thinking about doing a video all about 
audiobooks that I listen to that I find soothing. So let me know if that's something you'd want to see. Otherwise, school is done for the day. My homework is done. So I am going to go and watch Bad Girls. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know below if you did. If you don't want to leave me a full comment, just leave me a little emoji so I know that you're there. Please remember to thumbs up this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, look after yourselves. Bye. Thank you.